What's up, fish heads? Tony Baber here. Welcome to the first practice recap video of the 2021 season from Dale Hollow Lake. We're going to go over the baits, some of the patterns I tried to put together, and just overall what the conditions were like, and basically what made it so tough out there. So let's get to it. What's up guys? So obviously since I am unable to fish the tournament today, I thought I would kind of go through what my process was for practice. So basically a practice recap. I'll show you guys some video footage, we'll splice it into this as well, and I'll probably do some voiceover and stuff just to give you some different ideas and basically walk you through what mentally I was doing and kind of how I went about trying to break down this lake. Now, if you've watched any of my posts or if you've seen any of the videos lately, we had a really hard time in practice. So that's part of the reason why I didn't want to push my boat and put myself and my co-angler in danger, so to speak, or possible danger, or at least the, you know, the small chance of some sort of catastrophic event happening as far as with the motor and stuff. So rather than doing that, because we were having such a hard time catching anything, I figured I'd just pull the plug on it, get the motor fixed, get the control arm switch uh, fixed so that I'm not having any more problems with it. Hopefully I can get it running better before the next tournament because my plan is to actually compete in the last four week tournaments. Whether or not I can make the regional, it's going to be a long shot, but you know, it's all about getting that experience and just competing. You know, after last year with all the headaches and everything that went on and the mechanical issue I had with the boat again last year and not being able to finish the season last year, I want to do everything I can to try to finish the season to not only help out my sponsors and the people that support me and have done so much for me, but also just to prove to myself that I'm ready for this step and to really just keep developing and growing that and also give you guys some really good content. So this is obviously one of those colors that i spent a lot of time fishing with last year if you've seen my recap video and stuff you know exactly what i'm talking about it's that delta red crawl uh, this is a 5xd something i was using to try to target some of those deeper fish it seemed like especially yesterday or i should say especially friday uh, prior to the motor issues and stuff when we were out fishing we went into one creek up by uh i believe it was wolf creek marina i forget what it's called exactly but it's up by wolf river and we went up in a creek up in there. I think it's a little sulfur. And it looked like all the fish were out off the bluffs, probably about 10 to 15 yards, which, you know, there was a creek channel that kind of swung along a bluff, bluff bank there. And they were about 10 to 15 yards off. And they were suspended over about 24, 25 feet of water, 26 feet. But they were suspended in like 10 to 12 feet, uh, the majority of them at least what it seemed like we were tracking down. So I tried throwing, you know, something like a 5XD that'll get down to that 12 foot range just to see if I could maybe trigger some of them bites and see kind of what what we could do if we could do anything. Uh, we tried throwing that. Another thing that I tried to throw to try to target those suspended fish, especially because this is one of those, this is one of those baits that's really good at targeting those suspended fish. And that's the old umbrella rig. So this is how I had it rigged up. Uh, a lot of the lake and the water and stuff was pretty muddy. So I wanted to use the bigger blades because I felt like it would create more vibration and more thump. And then I also used that chartreuse and white uh, mini swimmer there by Exxon to give it just a little bit of a color pop. And the white is a really good contrast in that mud muddier, dirty water. So I really felt like this was the key combination if it was something that they were gonna bite if they were gonna attack like the umbrella rigs. And it's just one of those things that, you know, I wanted to try it out and we threw it all over the place between Thursday and Friday. We were trying it in a lot of different areas, the skinnier water, the deeper water, just basically anything that you could think of. And we just never really could get anything going. And from a couple people that we saw post online and some of the guys that we got to talk to out on the water and whatnot, they sounded like they weren't able to get anything going with the umbrella rig either. So if it ends up playing today during the tournament, I would be extremely surprised. But in the same sense, I probably wouldn't because it seems like people always figure out how to do stuff. And if it's going to work, they'll figure out a way to make it work. Because um, with these guys, they're all such good anglers that, you know, it's not hard to target some of that stuff, you know, and figure out those patterns. 
because everybody's trying it. So here's the old ball and chain. Give you that close up there. <laughs> um, this is something I was using on the MB crawl. If I can get it to sit still there. That's the bad part about the ball and chain. I did dye the legs on it a little bit with a garlic chartreuse and a orange just to give it a little bit of color. Um, this is something that I tried throwing a lot. It's something that I've really gotten a lot more confidence in. I haven't caught a ton of fish on it, but it's just something I'm more comfortable throwing now than I ever was before. And, you know, I'm really putting a lot more time into it last year and then this year because I know it's a proven fish catching bait and setup. And these uh, finesse crawls and the uh, regular size crawls as well by Exxon are great little Carolina rig baits because you get that floating claw action from the X zone and they're just the perfect size and the plastic is so soft it's just a great bait to use as a carolina rig bait so i tried throwing that on a lot of those rocky points and really anywhere behind the grass trying to get in and then even dragging it through the grass as well and just never could get anything going with it um, then of course the old adrenaline bug the uh pitching so i had that on a quarter ounce tungsten weight there just trying to pitch a couple of those wood laydowns and stuff. This is in the Bama crawl color and just see if I could maybe pull something out with that. I knew it was kind of a stretch because they're not really set up good and the water temperature really wasn't set up good for like a flip and bite. But I wanted to keep it honest, of course, because it's one of my favorite things to do. Any of you that have watched my videos, I'll post a link for this one, for that one, as far as my flipping and pitching video. And the old tried and true, one of my favorite things to throw down here at Dale Hollow this time of year, the old shell buster. So it's three quarter ounce. It's the jig head and hooks are made by Trocar. And I tried throwing this, of course, a ton. And I used the a new adrenaline crawl by X Zone. I used it in the, the California color and I also used it in the border crawl color, which is their new color that they came out with, which is that green pumpkin and red uh, with the gold flake that I talked about before in one of my other videos. So I, I went to this darker color because I thought maybe with the muddier water it might be a little bit better contrast. It still has the red flake to give them that red, you know, because we all know this time of year they can key in on that kind of stuff. But again, as much as I threw it and as much as I tried to force that thing down their throats and make them bite it, as much as I wanted them to eat it and bite it, I could not get anything going on it. Clear water, dirty water, shallow, deep, it didn't matter where I was throwing it, if it was ditches, if it was long points, you know, secondary points, main lake points, everywhere I threw it, I couldn't get anything to replicate. Last week when I was down here, I did get a good bite on it. It was about a three and a half pounder. I posted that little video if you guys saw it. So, I mean, it's something that I know works, but for whatever reason, I don't know if it's because of the rapid rising water, because the fish were probably a little bit stunned by everything that was going on, not used to those kind of conditions attacking them on this lake. Uh, so I don't know if it just turned them off of that bite or what it was. Now, next, I'm not gonna really talk too much about this one because I never really even threw it in practice too much. I think I maybe cast it a couple times, the old underspin. Uh, with the water as dirty as it was, I just didn't feel like that was a good thing to throw because it was just too hard for him to see it. Um, this is a finesse jig that I did try to throw. Uh, this is black and blue. I was throwing it uh, in that creek that was a little bit dirtier along those bluff walls, trying to target those vertical lay down wood uh, trees and stuff just to see if it was anything that I could get kind of keyed in on as far as the baits go. But again, it was something that I just could not get going. Uh, Mike Rader, the guy that I practice with, uh, fishing as a co-angler, he kind of tied on one of these and was fishing with it behind me when I was doing something else. And he did hook into a good fish. We're not sure what it was. I, we think it was a bass, but it might have been a striper because it came off. Whatever it was, it was really big. Um, but again, it was one of those things we just could never replicate. We would get bites every once in a while on jigs, but it was nothing that we could easily pattern or really just consistently get a bite. And it was in a couple different colors. So moving on to more of the power fishing stuff. Uh, this is the old half ounce red eye shad by striking in the black and gold. It's got that nice flash to it. And those beads, I got red hook on it there in the front, just a little something different. 
This is one of those baits. I don't have a ton of confidence in a lipless crankbait, but I also know how effective it can be this time of year. So I, I kept one tied on a lot during practice last week and this week, just to keep kind of trying to build more confidence in it, as well as to try to make sure that there wasn't something pattern wise that I could maybe develop from that. Um, I tried fishing that mostly in deeper water in some of those ditches that were on the points. So there was a couple points that we fished, like one up in Ill Will Creek that had a really defined ditch on it. And it was about 30 to 40 feet of water and tried just targeting the edges of that because you could mark a couple of fish. They were a little bit more scattered, but there was some bait there. And I thought something like that with the muddier water, that gold flash and as sunny with bluebird skies. I mean, if you can see behind me, this is what the skies have been all week. Uh, when I was down here last week and fished for the two days for practice, same thing, exact same conditions. The only thing that's really been changing is the, the temperatures themselves. I mean, even the wind has been fairly consistent anywhere from 10 to 15 miles an hour. So again, the red eye shad tried that, didn't have a whole lot of success. Let's see if I can get this one out of here. And then next up, what we threw, of course, and this goes back to that whole red orange pattern stuff that we have going on or typically is a good thing this time of year this one in particular is a yozuri or i'm sorry a lucky craft uh it's like a 2.5 size square bill crankbait um i really like the color on it and i really like the way that it swims and feels in the water um it's definitely one of my favorite square bills as far as in that color range that i own Again, tried fishing it shallow, just could not find them shallow consistently or even really find a bite on that color. They just did not seem to want to aggressively hit that color at all. So, I mean, it really kind of made a struggle of it. Really kind of frustrating because you want to be able to catch them like that. You know, you feel like that's the, that's the deal, you know, this time of year. So, and then this is the old uh, fairy wall, Ooh, you know, a little bit of gag there something that i hate throwing but you know what if you're going to be a good angler you got to be diverse and be able to try things and be proficient at it so here's the shaky head setup uh, of course i don't have the hook in the worm there but that's the deception worm by x zone and the green pumpkin and that's a shaky head um, hook there by trocar again tried throwing it yesterday or i'm sorry tried throwing it Thursday in practice a little bit. Some of the clear water that we were in, we were in this one little creek arm next to Sulphur Creek that was actually, it seemed like a really nice creek. Had some really good gravel banks on it and just really seemed like a good spawning type pocket and area, um, but we could not get a bite going. And we tried going a little bit more finesse just to see if it would work out or not, if we couldn't get something going, but never was able to, so. And then this is what I, this, this bait here is something that I thought was going to turn out to be, I don't want to say a secret weapon, but I really thought this was going to turn into something. So this is the wiggle wart and I couldn't even tell you what color it is because I'm not as familiar with the wiggle wart, the storm wiggle wart colors, but a wiggle wart is always a solid, solid producer down on these highland reservoirs especially in the spring late fall it's something about that sound and that action and just the way that these seek and just move around in the water that the fish down here just cannot stand or stay away from this particular bait i was throwing it last week it was up around sulfur creek marina you know one of my favorite places to fish if you've seen my other videos and the water was stained so I knew it was going to be stained coming into this week because I had seen the forecast again, going back and looking at the weather, you knew that there was going to be anywhere from two to five inches of rain within the area of the lake. So you knew that lake was going to come up a lot. It was going to be really stained and muddy down here, which it was for the most part, I'd say probably 80, 70, 80% of the lake, at least mid lake up was stained. Um, so when I got a bite on this, it was probably about a two and a half pound large mouth that I'd caught there. And he hit it pretty aggressively for as cold as the water was because it was only 42, 43 at the time. I really felt like coming into this particular week with the little bit warmer water and just the conditions basically being the same, but the water being muddy, I really thought I could get something going on that. I tried so hard and threw it so much. Uh, I started off throwing it on 12 pound test on Thursday 
had a little bit of an issue with my reel, ended up re-spooling it with 10 pound test just to give it a little bit more action and also give it a little bit more depth because the fish that we were able, the few that we were able to actually find on the fish finder, it seemed like they were located down in those that middle range, like that 12 to 14 feet range. Um, so we just tried, you know, I tried to get deeper with that because of course those baits can make it down to 14 foot range if you're giving it a long enough cast. And with something like 10 pound test with a good, good length of a cast, you can reach down to some of those better depths. And then of course, everybody's favorite, at least the, probably one of the hottest selling baits in the last, I'd say year, is the old fire crawl by Jack Hammer. This is a 3 8 ounce and I have the adrenaline crawl on there in that new border crawl color, that green pumpkin and red, if you can see it there. So again, because it's such a hot bait, and I mean, you look at that color and you see that and you think that dirty water, I mean, what better contrast and what better way to capitalize on a crawl bite if they're actually targeting crawfish in that red and orange color. Uh, what better way to really get that going in muddier water than something like this? Because you got that thump of that chatterbait, the thump of that jackhammer, and then you have those bright, flashy colors with the orange. I've got the extra thump with the adrenaline crawl on there and the way that these legs are built. It just gives it a lot of action, a lot of basically seeking ability as far as being able to attract those fish and, and really set off their lateral line, you know, because that's what these fish are feeding with in this really muddy water. They're feeling those vibrations and attacking those fish that way. And then, of course, one of my favorites to throw, the old spinner bait. This is one of the Booyah Covert series, the Jason Christie design spinner baits. Uh, like this one, obviously, with the muddier, colder water. Really thought those double Indiana blades there would kind of set it off a little bit with that kicker blade on there, that orange. Again, if they're targeting that red and orange color, Something like that, and that muddy water with that white and chartreuse just set it off. Uh, tried slow rolling this, fishing it around cover, fishing it around docks, you know, anywhere that the water was dirty, this is what I was going to and throwing. And I got that mini swimmer on there, the white one, just for that extra color, extra thump, extra kind of bulk to it. It works really good. It's a great tandem bait. Um, I just couldn't get anything going on it. I had one fish, I think, hit it, and that was it. <laughs> and then one of the things that we heard was working and we were, I was actually throwing this anyway is the old thunder cricket or as me and one of my guys at Cabela's always say the thunder chicken we had a customer refer to it as a thunder chicken so if I ever refer to it as a thunder chicken I am actually talking about the strike king thunder cricket just so you know so this is the half ounce white and chartreuse course again with the mini swimmer because I love the action on these things they're great trailers they're also great throwing them by themselves um, in the white and chartreuse and then I, I just love the blade on these thunder crickets because it's kind of a finesse thump if you've ever felt one it's just got like a real tight wiggle to it it's not overbearing it's not real loud and hard and I felt like that would be a good deal because these fish see so many uh, crankbaits and so many jackhammers and chatterbaits and things with that hard thump and that just predictable thump i guess you could say something like this is a great way to just be different from all the other people that are out there fishing not to say that nobody else fishes them but obviously a lot of people gravitate to those chatterbait style and the traditional style blades so something like this can be just set your set you apart a little bit uh, but we did hear from one of the guys that was fishing the tournament that he was able to get a pattern going with some pretty good fish throwing this around wood cover, like really tight to it. And just really attacking and being thorough to that wood cover with the chatterbait. It's just something that I tried a little bit and definitely tried a lot more of yesterday after kind of hearing that, but I was not able to really replicate it. I think there were some better areas that I actually was gonna target going into the afternoon practice after we had moved yesterday. But then of course we had the motor problems which kind of screwed everything up, so. Unfortunately, I wasn't really able to try to replicate that pattern and bring something a little bit closer to home as far as closer to the launch site because I was kind of saving that stuff for the last day of practice just to see because I tried all the outlier areas and wasn't having a lot of luck. So I was going to hit the more popular areas and the better populated areas as far as the fish population and the health of those fish. So that kind of covers everything I got left on my deck here. 
So another thing that we were trying, or I was trying, I should say, in that cleaner water, I was throwing this finesse jig here, and I got the X-Zone chunk trailer on there, and just regular green pumpkin. This is an Andy's custom jig. You guys may be familiar with it. It's something that Edwin Evers throws a lot of and always talks really well about them. Um, I really like them with that rubber skirt, the hand-tied nature of it, which just give it that quality that you can't really find in your traditional kind of main brand made jigs because it just it holds together better with the skirt and stuff but finesse jig something i've gotten a lot more into the last couple of years really as far as throwing and kind of testing myself or i guess you could say pushing myself to throw more because you know you get into these pressured situations with a large field or just you know these some of the smaller lakes not to say dale hollow is smaller but you know something like a finesse jig again can set you apart from what those fish are seeing a lot and if it's a good built jig it's got a good quality skirt to it with something like an x-zone trailer on there with those floating claws all that kind of stuff comes together and it can really set your stuff apart and it might make a big difference in your ability to capitalize on those fish and of course the old blade bait again the black and gold Something I tried yesterday, just a little bit, some of those deeper channels and deeper points and stuff, what little bit of fish that we could uh, scan, I should say, on the depth finder. I tried throwing that on them just to see what we could get going with it. Unfortunately, was never able to kind of really get it going good. So let me dig in here and show you some of the other baits. Here's that Nichols hammer blade spinner, spinner bait with the zoom split tail trailer on there. This is one of my favorite clear water baits to throw. Uh, this is something I threw last year on the docks there in Sulphur Creek and did really well with them because the water was a little bit clearer than it was this time around for sure. But when we were in the clear water Thursday and practicing, because we did a lot of mid-lake practicing, a lot of those creeks were pretty clear. I mean, there was a little bit of stain to it, about the right amount of stain that you'd want for um, a spinner bait like this. So tried throwing it around those docks, even tried throwing around some wood and stuff and just never was able to get anything going with it. But this is a great spinner bait. I love the tinsel on it. I think it just adds an extra flash with that holographic hammer blade on there. It's just something that, you know, is a really good spinner bait for you to try. Now, let me pull out the old flat sides. Strike key 1.5 flat sides. These two are hooked together here. So that's the DB crawl and then the Delta crawl as well. Of course, you know, from the other videos and some of the other conversations I've had, these are great. And a lot of people tell you this, these are great baits this time of year to just target some of those finicky fish in that cold water. But because you get that extra thump with that tight wiggle of the flat sides, but I couldn't get anything going on that either. So that kind of sums up really the baits that I was throwing. It's about everything that I threw in practice. And so, I mean, as you can see, I covered a lot of different types of water, a lot of different depths of water as far as the water column itself, and just was never able to really put anything together consistently. Now, it sounds like a lot of people struggled out there, but of course, as I always say, somebody's gonna catch them, somebody's gonna find them. I just always hope it's me. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to do it this tournament. And with everything going on with the boat and all that stuff, I mean, as frustrated as I am with it, you know, it's just part of tournament fishing. This is the real side of tournament fishing. The guys that can't afford the brand new boats and the brand new motors, because there's so many of us out there that are running older equipment or just kind of keeping stuff together and keeping it running. This boat has been great for me. I've had some issues with the motor, of course, but you know what, I don't mind trying to fix it because I'm just proud of this boat and I'm proud of the things that I've been able to learn fishing from it. So as this season goes on, hopefully we can get it fixed. Hopefully we can get back out there on the water and fish as a pro. If for some reason I cannot do it, I plan on switching over to the co-angler side and I'll finish out the season there and just do the best I can and see what happens with it. Um, cause there's obviously no guarantees. And once I get this to the shop, we'll see exactly what's going on with it. Hopefully it's something we can get fixed and get going right again so that I can uh, get out there and really compete and see what I got. So as far as kind of a recap of areas of the lake, um, I went everywhere from like the Hendrix Marina to Jolly Creek to, you know, all the way down towards the Wolf River into the lake. I went into Sulphur Creek a little bit. Uh, didn't really get to target as much as I wanted to because that's where we were going to go Friday afternoon but obviously we had the boat problems once i launched into sulfur creek so i was never actually able to cast a line 
into sulfur on Friday to kind of see if there was anything there for me. The water was extremely muddy in those creeks, especially the bigger creeks, and it just wasn't pushing. It wasn't really settling down too much because they weren't drawing a whole lot. There was water coming in. It just started to fall a little bit yesterday, but not a whole lot. So I don't think it'll do too much to the fish as far as moving them around. The cold front that we had yesterday and kind of carried over in today, I think suspended those fish, but I really believe this afternoon bite could be pretty strong. Um, like I said, as far as what I was looking for, I was trying to target more that mid lake area because I knew the water would be cleaner in most of those creeks, which it was. But unfortunately, we just weren't able to really get those fish fired up or even find some good quality fish that would consistently produce. So we'll come back in April. We'll look at it then. Hopefully that water will be nice and warm and those fish will be spawning. We'll be able to find them up shallow and find them in those post spawn maybe patterns and just really get after it. And hopefully we'll see some really good bags in April. And hopefully we'll see me fishing from the boater side in April as well. So thank you guys for tuning in. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hope everybody out there on the water had a really good day today. We're going to go pick up the boys here in a few hours and kind of see how they did. And we'll give you a recap on the, the new series that I'm putting out here as far as the day in the life kind of stuff. It's all about just the day in, day out, the travel, the housing, the food, the practice, all that kind of stuff. And just kind of what goes on. Um, right now, we're calling it TV fishing on the line. So tune in for that video. That'll be dropping soon. Hope you guys enjoy it. Hope you guys enjoy the idea of it and the concept. I'm shooting everything myself. So the angles and stuff might be a little bit limited, but we're gonna do the best we can to try to keep it interesting and really give you some good information and maybe entertain you a little, as well as teach you a little to go along with it. So good luck, good fishing, and thanks for tuning in.